Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Greetings, everybody. So we're going to do a live setup, hopefully, of Linux Lite. I haven't even installed it yet. Hopefully it installs. All right, so here we're going to walk through the installation process with Linux Lite 3.8. All right, so now we are on the startup or the, the uh, install screen. So we have install updates, install drivers, set restore point, install language, shows online support, forums, hardware database code, donate, and social media. Ooh, social media. Ooh. 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 Where am I? There I am. Greetings. All right, let's just go ahead and close that. Let's install it. Kitty, don't move my camera. Kitty's like, yeah, I'm going to move the camera around, man. I want the microphone to photobomb the place. All right, so here, um, here's our installer. I believe this is the Cal uh, Calamaris. Am I saying that right, Calamaris installer? Uh, we can download and updates where we go. We can install third-party codecs. So if you are new to Linux, um, the first one, download updates while installing Linux, some people question if this actually works properly because you generally still have to install some updates. It installs some updates, not everything. Third-party... The reason this is an option is some of these options are proprietary, um, and in some instances you may or may not need a license to use it. I mean, and some people don't want to have proprietary stuff on their system, and that's why it is always an option. But many Linux installs have the ability to select this on during the installation phase. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and click on that, and then next it should bring us to our time zone. I forget what's next in this particular installer. Uh, but it's going to go ahead and walk through this. Um, the About the virtual machine, we're running this on a virtual machine, and this has four cores and six gigs of RAM on it. So we can install inside my current installation of Linux Mint. Um, I'm going to go ahead and erase the disk. I can encrypt the new Linux installation. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and push the install now. It's going to go through our uh, partitions. It's going to automatically set up partitions, swap, things like that. So we're going to click Next and then let that go again uh, through here. Uh, here's our time zone. It detects that based on the IP. Here's your keyboard layouts. You can change those if they do not automatically correct. We'll do Linux Lite, Linux Lite, and we'll just do Linux Lite. Linux Lite Kitty. Don't type something else in my password box, please. Um, here you can require the password to log in or log in automatically. I'm just going to set the login automatically. And now we are going through the waiting game as it copies, installs files, and stuff like that. Sheesh. So I don't know what the issue was there. We are installed. We're going to go ahead and install updates first. Now we're back online. Okay, update now. Um, so now I have that nice welcome menu that I'm not seeing again. Again, I uh, I wanted to go go through the rest of them. So looking at drivers, see that just goes back to installing. Let's see, there's updates. Here's drivers. So this is getting your basic Ubuntu tool. Um, so it's searching and scanning for drivers. So now this was interesting. Um, this is this is certainly a fascinating thing that I'm not sure is a good idea, like not good idea for a seasoned Linux guy. Installing those updates, it automatically installed the proprietary drivers for things without asking me about it. Um, and it should definitely have asked if you were talking about a Linux distro that uh, someone might want to actually... Um, might want to actually use uh, and be more cognizant about what's on there. It does want me to restart the system right now because we made those changes. We could set a system restore point. Let's go ahead and do the reboot um, and see if uh, see if everything works now out of the box without without any issues. All right, so it did install um, and it's actually showing me everything correct. We can turn this off if I don't want it to show up. I can keep it on if I do want it to show up. Um, it let's see if I can change the um, uh, size of the window that's probably going to be in my settings ok 
Okay, so there we are. Now we have our desktop working right. All right, this, so installing the updates is definitely what we needed to do to get that running. So let's go ahead and walk through, uh, walk through what's on here and how to do any customization. Like most uh, operating systems, right-clicking the desktop, uh, we have a variety of things, including our desktop settings, which is where we can make adjustments to our, um, to our desktop background. Oh, gorgeous pictures on here. Ooh, I've been here before. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use that one. I've, I've been there before. That's uh, uh, Horseshoe Point in Utah. Oh, just gorgeous, gorgeous pictures. Uh oh, this one's been known to cause hardware problems when you have a cat. There's that. The other ones we could use, we could use some of the other Linux. Ooh, ooh, oh, that's too bright. Oh, that one's a little better. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and use Dead Horse Point. Um, that's a nice, nice background. So you just select your background. Um, in your desktop settings, you also have menus. So what this is, is you can see these little icons over here. You can actually um, disable those, in which case, uh, if I hit apply, I believe then, let's see, desktop menu, applications. Okay, yep include applications menu uh, so that's the applications menu down here so if I toggle that off we don't have the applications menu I can get to it only over here alright um, you can show application icons in the applications menu or not got those mixed up in the one yesterday as well uh, icons Here's icon types. We can show our um, desktop icons. So our home folder is a good one. Maybe you want your trash can. So those icons are now on the uh, on the desktop. So we have all that set up. Uh, some people ask about how you can move your bar in XFCE. Uh, if you want to come down here, um, here's your panel panel preferences. You need to unlock your panel first, and then over here there is a grab bar. You can grab it. One of the cool things about this one is you could actually drop it anywhere. <laughs> so we have, uh, here's your top, here is your bottom. Of course, that's in your horizontal mode. You also have a vertical mode where it'll basically run the bar vertically, or you have a desk bar where it's going to run the bar. It still is vertical, but you can notice that your menus here are kind of horizontal. So you have a variety of options. Um, I always prefer my bars at the bottom, so that's where I'm going to go ahead and keep it. But once you do that, you might want to uh, click the uh, lock panel again so you don't accidentally and inadvertently move it. Um, we can also adjust the size of the panel if you want to make it bigger or smaller, and you can increase the number of rows on the panel. So you can have a variety of different rows. So the number of rows is separate from the actual size of, of the panel itself. You can also have the panel spanning only a short distance uh, across the desktop. So if you want a small panel, you can do something like that or 100% automatically. That's a, a measure of percentages. And then you can hide it always intelligently or never. So that's kind of my, my personal preference uh, is, to, um, uh, is to always show it. But here is if somebody wants to hide it, you have that option as well. My apologies, I'm not quite as used to XFCE. Okay, so here is your appearance. Um, so the, your appearance will either use your system style, whatever's in your styling system. Uh, we can do a individual solid color. So if you want it to be like, you know, some annoyingly bright red panel or something, you could do that. Um, and then, um, or you could do some type of background image like that. You do have the option of using opacity, but you have to enable, um, you have to enable compositing uh, in the window manager in order to do that. Okay. Um, so over here, there's a... Um, uh, on your items, this is how, what items are on your panel. So you can actually, um, if you want to move something, you need to come over here and click the move item and then you can actually drag it and drop it wherever you want to put it. You can actually, let's see, 
I was thinking uh, the locking function, but that's Matei. <laughs> so um, you have the ability to drop various items in the menu. Here's our show desktop. We have each launcher is run individually. That's different from an application like Linux Mint where all the launchers are in one launcher application. Uh, KDE also does that. Uh, window buttons. Um, you have a separator, which just gives us our, our little separation gaps in between things. Uh, workplace switcher. I'll go ahead and get rid of that because I never use work workplace switchers. Um, notification area, uh, which is down here, indicator plugin, and the time, date, and things like that. So you can actually add more items. So I can add an action bar, applications menu, clock, you know, variety of different things I can add onto the menu at any point. I can even add an extra panel. So if I want to have a panel on the top and a panel on the bottom, I can go ahead and add another panel. I could put one on, on the side or whatever else. Maybe I want a big panel for launchers. That's actually what I do on my backup computer, which is running Mate, is I have a panel on the bottom that just has my windows that are open, but my panel on the top is actually just a big list of all of my launchers really quick. So that's kind of what I do, uh, what I do over there. Um, and so with that being said, that's how you make adjustments to your panel. Um, as far as applications, uh, I should say really quick on, on this one here, this is one of the ones that just allows you to drag your um, size of your, your uh, menu however you want it. So whatever size you want, you can do that. Here's your computer settings, here's your uh, all settings, and then starting down with your accessories and below, this gives you your applications. See, we have basic system utilities. Uh, we have some other things like, uh, this is GIMP. Um, you know, GIMP is an acronym for GNU Image Manipulation Program. That is GIMP. Um, here's internet. We have Firefox by default, uh, Thunderbird. Glad to see distros are still putting Thunderbird in. Oh, I'm so sick of seeing Geary in these things. Um, we have VLC, CD Burner. Uh, we have our Libre, uh, is this LibreOffice? My guess is LibreOffice. It is an older version of LibreOffice. Um, I'm not sure if this is the absolute latest one. This is actually 5.1 though. This is much older version of LibreOffice. Um, and inside of your system, uh, we have light software uh, installing. We have light tweaks. These are some of those things that kind of makes uh, Linux light a little bit different. Some people asked about the system resources. So we have, looks like we have HTOP installed by default. So this is only running on 350 megabytes. So that's actually pretty good. Q is the proper way to close, close that menu there. All right, so let's go ahead and have a look at your uh, your light tweaks and light software. So light software, we do need to enter our password. Uh, yes, we will update the software sources, let that kind of do its thing. And so here is install software or remove software. Let's go ahead and go with install software. Let's see what's out there. So this was one of the things I really liked about Linux Lite is you kind of had this really nice quick application list of various things. We have Audacity, um, uh, Cherry Tree. This is like a, a node application, Chromium browser. This does have some of the nice applications that you might see on um, uh, on Linux Mint uh, that you don't generally see on some uh, some other other distros. Like I didn't see them on on Pop OS or uh, many Ubuntu's aren't coming with these. But your things like Dropbox, um, Spotify, Skype, those are getting harder to spot. We do have actually a a, a Tor web browser bundle. Um, that's actually the first time I've seen that in in a system. Uh, virtual box. Here's an iDevice manager, manager iDevices, uh, things like that. So there we can go with remove software and this should give us a populated list of all the software that is installed. It looks like it only gives us software that we have installed, not the default software. Let's go ahead and quit that. And let's have a look at the light tweaks. I remember this one actually being really cool. Um, okay, so boot up fix. These are some of the nice tools that kind of make Lite stand out. We have a boot up fix to restore the boot uh, splash to Linux Lite, basic boot screen, um, clearing memory, freeing up system memory, uh, setting your default web browser. If you want to install a, a different web browser, you can set your default there. 
um, this toggles. So basically what this application is doing is just a, a click overlay to make adjustments to the system configuration files that you might otherwise need to manually edit. So that's kind of what they're doing here. Host name, kernel installer. If you want to specify which specific kernel you're booting from, you can do that. Um, preload apps, uh, whisker menu, remove six recently used item from your menu list. Okay, so there's that. Let's look at a settings manager. This guy here will give us uh, more items. Okay, so appearance, um, this guy here, we have the ability to adjust our icons. I'm not a big fan of these types of icons. I don't like how they're, they're kind of square or whatever, so I can actually go to different icons here. We might just go ahead and keep keep with this one. Though it's not my favorite, it's, it's not too bad. All right, under your style, this will adjust our colorations. So if you want to pick a different stylation, you can do that. I like that one there. It's a little bit more skeuomorphic than some of the other ones are. So going back to all settings, here's your desktop settings. We've looked at that one already. Uh, file manager. Yeah, somebody is reporting you can't go into your file manager as root. This is something that Mint allows you to do and pretty much any distro is inside of here. Actually, here it's open as administrator. Let's give this a try. Yeah, so apparently you can you can now actually just right click and open as root. So that's good. Uh, for those curious about that, that looks like a, an option now. Um, so you can display uh, various settings, behaviors, Folder permissions, ask every time, apply folders. This is when changing permissions in folders, things like that. All right, file manager, user manager. Here's your panel settings. We've already looked at that, of course. Okay, so here is the window manager where we needed to enable your compositor. So if I enable Display Compositor, this is what's going to allow you to do things like having a semi-transparent panel. So we'll do that. Now let's go back to our panel settings. And I should now have the option of adjusting our, um, adjusting our opacity. So enter and leave. And so what the enter and leave is will give you the ability to... Um, if you do something like this, then it's really transparent. Then when you hover over it, it gives you a solid color. So you can see what's happening as I'm doing that. I'm not a fan of that effect. Um, if you are, it's great. It's an option. I'm not a huge fan of it, but I do like a slight transparency. So what I might end up doing is something like this, or maybe just do a, a subtle, just a little subtle change. So that's how you enable your uh, transparency is you need to go into your uh, configuration, um, window manager configuration things. Okay, firewall configuration. You might want to come in here and turn this on. I generally don't turn these on. Though it actually turns on by default. That's good. I generally don't turn one on because my computer sit behind a pretty beefy firewall on uh, PFSense. Um, but definitely if you have a mobile device or something like that, you want to turn this on. This is actually one of the few Linux distros I know of that turns this on by default. That's actually really good. That's pretty cool. Um, let's see. Settings editor. So that's various keyboard settings. Let's have a look at the case. Okay, so we're running the latest one. So if there is a new version of Linux Lite, you could click on that and get some information on that. So that's kind of how we get our setup done. So let me go ahead and have a look at some comments and we'll come back to this and see if there's anything else we want to look at. Thanks for watching this video. You can check out another video right over here. You can check out my Patreon page right down here. And you can also help support us at switchtolinux.com forward slash support. I'll have affiliate links to Amazon, PayPal, and I also have some merchandise available at shop.switchtolinux.com.